I was looking for another LED floodlight just for fill-in and I thought, well, tell you what, let's buy one of the generic eBay ones, just at the very least of the case. So the one I got was actually from a UK supplier and the fact that it's a 50 watt floodlight for £10.29, including shipping within the UK, is already making me wonder that despite the fact, the picture, if you zoom up close in the actual listing, it looks like, you know, the standard... Uh, the standard LED like this that is normally used for the driver, it, I was wondering, you know, is it going to be that or is it going to be one of the new mains voltage cob LEDs? And the only way to find out was to buy one. And then we can test it for its power rating as well. So let's uh, get this open. So I'll just slip the box here. And we can check this out. We can do some electrical tests on it. We can open it up and we can see what's inside and see is it shitty or is it sweet? At the very least, it's going to be usable for components. If the case is capable of dissipating 50 watts. So it is rather predictably bigger than the 50 watt uh, lights. It comes with a bit of foam across the front and a bag. I'll just chuck them down. It does look like it's the Cobb LED. I wonder if it's the uh, mains voltage one or the low voltage. I'm guessing it's the main voltage one, but we'll find out when we open it. But the first thing we should do is test if it's grounded, because that is a common issue. So let's uh, bring the meter in. Continuity. Put it between the earth and a random screw. It's grounded. That's nice. That's a good start. Now I'm going to bring in the hop. I was going to say hoppy quick test. I'm going to bring in the hoppy, but here's the cliff quick test, which is just a really convenient way of connecting up wires temporarily. And we shall connect the wires up like this. I have to uh, mention it by name because otherwise people do ask. It seems a popular device. Very handy uh, for workshops. So let's get the hoppy in with its like, low speed multiplex display. And I'll plug this into the hoppy and we'll see what our 50 watt light draws. Our 50 watt light, it, it's bright enough. Uh, it's drawing 23 watts, which suggests it's probably got a 20 watt driver in it, would you say? Probably. Power factor, usual, you know, these things, they usually say on them greater than 0.95, it's a load of crap. The power factor is 0.563, which is a bit crappy, particularly for the higher power lights. So this, uh, the LED in here does have the five rows of LEDs, reminiscent of those other chips. It's not like the usual, sort of like the cob one, where it's uh, the mains voltage cob, where it's absolutely covered in LEDs. That's interesting. Let's... Uh, Investigate it. Is this screwdriver going to do for getting the cover off? If anything, I have ordered uh, some LEDs for it. The uh, replacements, have, I've ordered some of those flip chip, but in the style of these, but the newer version that has the inverted chips with no bond wires. The, I think they're going to be more reliable, but the only way to find out is to get some and try them out. Although having said that, uh, I don't really grill my lights. That said, if I just tilt, you'll see them. My lights up there are two 20 watt lights flooding down onto the workbench, a bit of diffusion. And they, uh, initially the first LEDs I, the, they came with and subsequent ones that I put in, They've got 20 watt drivers and I used uh, 100 watt LEDs in them just purely because it spreads the dissipation. But I had major problems over time with sections of the LEDs going out and then flashing and strobing. It seems to just be the main issue with that style of LED. They've not been very reliable because the gold bond wires, they just seem to have problems where they connect onto the bus bars at the end. Ooh, the reveal is about to happen. What is going to be inside? Is it going to be one of the big chips? Here's the glass with the seal, a little bit of foil over the back just to make these numbers look all nice and metallic. I'll put the glass down where I can't drop it. There's a driver. That's interesting. So, what sort of LEDs in here? And where's the earth? Oh, I've just spotted the earth. I think the earth test would not have passed a bond quality test. 
The earth wire is not attached, it's just dangling against the case. As is often the case with these, that is a, a really tight screw. Oh, I'm gonna have to use, uh, I'm gonna have to use something meatier for that. What have I got? These are Phillips, are they? They are the Phillips, they're not posy, so let's uh, dig out a weirder screwdriver and use a Phillips. I don't think it's going to be this size, is it? Oh, that'll do. Yeah, it's out now. Ooh, super flimsy reflector. And there's our earth, just floating around inside. Nice, they could. Would that not have reached one of the screws? Why do they not earth these? It's, it's the low voltage cob, but it's the one with the flip chips in it. That's interesting. That would kind of reach that. They could have done that. They could even, you know, if they'd tapped up one, these holes are already drilled, they could have just tapped in. That's interesting, they've used that. Now, I wonder what quality. One of the things that uh, I found with the other LEDs before was that as you turn the voltage up, the LEDs were not very evenly matched in these. I get the feeling that the this style with the bond wires going across onto the sort of bus bars, I reckon the bond wires effectively sort of damage the LEDs because they're trying to spot weld little tiny wires on and then go on to a sort of heavy bus bar at the end. And I got the feeling that that was the main weakness with it. I get the feeling, again, that most of the LEDs that were on eBay were probably crappy ones. We were being used as the skip. So tell you what, tell you what, let's uh, see if I can just pull these wires back. Let's uh, grab the insulation on them and just nudge it back without actually cutting the wires. Can I just nudge that back to get a crocodile clip on? Let's uh, get my bench supply on here. You can, well, in most instances, I should think, you can uh, power the LED externally if the priority is correct. The, the driver should not normally be worried. As long as you don't go too close to its actual... If, if the voltage exceeded the point, it might actually... It depends on the circuitry. Um, if there's no feedback circuitry, if there's no opto isolator feeding back in this, you can pretty much go up to the full voltage rating of the capacitor in there without it really doing much. So let's... Uh, get some test leads on here. Try not to destroy the cob in the process. Try and smoosh that uh, insulation back a wee bit. I don't want to cut the wire completely off. I probably will end up cutting the wire up completely off, but only by accident. Can I get a crocodile clip on at that? Yes, more or less. We're okay. So let's uh, focus down onto here, zoom in a bit, and test this. You know what? I could, uh, let's uh, put this to the higher voltage setting. This is the 36 volt range. Let's crank up to the point that I expect it to start glowing, which should be, there's 10 chips in series, I'd guess. This is yeah, is a standard sort of 10 in series. So that's going to be about 24 volts will start glowing. We're approaching that. Oh, look at that. There. Let's uh, get this off. Let's take the exposure off and see if it can... Right, okay, that's super grainy because it's gone super high gain, but the camera can see better than I can see the illumination of these. But that is just... They are all perfectly matched intensity-wise. Those chips are absolutely perfect. That's uh, that's not even registering one milliamp yet. That's interesting. Now it is registering a milliamp. Okay, right. That's interesting. Oh, they are well matched. That's nice. Let's lock the exposure again and zoom back out. So, um, yeah, 
This does look like the standard flip chip arrangement. That's interesting. I have ordered. I anticipated that there might be a possibility this didn't come with the 50 watt ballast driver. So I have ordered some 50 watt drivers. Hopefully they will be 50 watt. And I have found some of these LEDs and ordered some of these LEDs as well. It's interesting to see this is there. I wonder the 5B10C must mean five rows um, and ten in series. I'm not sure what the B or C stands for, but I've seen this number 5B10C for a 50 watt cropping up a lot, and 2B10C for the um, 20 watt, and 10B10C for the 100 watt, so it must relate to the number of chips in the cob. I also see, uh, and I've noticed this on some other ones as well, there are little fins that you can't actually see them. I'll draw them in actually, just so you can actually. They're little sort of heat sink fins. Tracks coming out like that. I wonder if they're commoning these LEDs because it's done in the sort of series parallel, parallel arrangement on a circuit board and the LEDs are bonded directly on. What sometimes, what certainly did happen with these is that the LEDs could only be in straight lines, but I've noticed with some of the other larger cob panels, like say for instance, these type of things, the LEDs are sometimes in just simple series circuits, but they're also sometimes as a full grid, they're actually tied along horizontally as well as uh, vertically, so to speak, which means that if one LED failed, it's not going to knock out a whole line. It's effectively just going to be one LED in parallel with a load of other LEDs, and they'll just pick it up from there, and it will still, most of the LEDs will light, just that one will go out. Well, that's interesting. So, um, this is super flimsy. This is absolutely just the flimsiest I've ever felt. It feels almost like just barely above tinfoil, this reflector. But that's okay. I also wonder uh, if I was using these for flood lighting, assuming this uh, heat sink can dissipate 50 watts, it looks a wee bit shy for 50 watts of heat. Um, there's the possibility that uh, if I wouldn't need the glass, you could actually have the reflector, you could have this open, so to speak, so that air can circulate inside, the, inside of it as well as an outside, because it doesn't have to be waterproof in this application. I wonder if they've used heat sink compound underneath this. I suppose there's one way to find out. And that's to take the chip off. Let's do that. That should have. Uh, I should have kept that other screwdriver out. No, I didn't. Let's whip it out. So far, it's a 50 watt LED. Apparently, it's a 20 watt driver. Those are useful components on right. It's not quite the full thing I wanted. I'm going to have to use the correct tool here. So it's not quite the full thing that I wanted, but having said that, it's useful for the components, it's useful for the case, so it will get used. I think there'll be heat sink compound under this. I hope there is heat sink compound. Is it going to be the usual white siliconated stuff with this sort of a, uh, what I'm guessing is a, uh, I can see a slight slick of stuff, uh, zinc oxide? as the sort of pigment, the sort of like the thermal carrier. It does have goo under it, it does have the white heat sink compound spread under it. This is interesting. So I wonder, I'm guessing the manufacturers, maybe this is the new cheaper option than the other ones. It must be a lot cheaper to make. I wonder if it's going to be more reliable as well, because it is that much simpler construction. I guess time is going to tell. Oh, there's another little lug they could have stuck this earth wire onto. Why do they not earth anything? What is this strange thing going on? That's very odd. Is that threaded as well? I don't know if that's pre-threaded or not. It is, it's threaded. It's just ready to take a screw and earth that. Why on earth have they just not done it? But there we go. Um, it's a cheap, generic floodlight. It's nice to see they've got this because it means there's going to be less chance of flicker if it's reasonably good quality. And even if it wasn't quite good quality, you could still patch across the output. You could put a capacitor, which is going to actually provide extra smoothing because that's fundamentally what's in here anyway. And that's more or less it. The flex is probably crappy anyway. It's probably copper-coated aluminium. 
But that is the type. The reason it's a short flex is because it's the one that's pre-molded into these. So all they've done is poke it through here and then goop it with some silicone rubber where it goes through. So this could be spliced inside. You could actually put a bit of terminal and uh, cut it fairly close to here and then connect it into a proper bit of flex, which is usually what I do anyway when I'm using these. So yes, it's an interesting light. It's certainly useful for the components. Not quite what they promised, but, but good enough in this situation, and, uh, particularly interesting with this particular LED.